Well, hey there, and welcome to Hey Paula, help me with my DIY project. I'm Paula Blankenship, and this is my host, or co-host. This is my co-host, Ms. <laughs> Osborne, and uh, we got some great tips for you today. And this is all about your dining room, how to refresh and renew your dining space. Everybody doesn't have a dining room today, so no matter what size of room this is, you can call it formal or informal, but just some uh, great tips that you might apply to other rooms even in your house. So let's just get started. Yes, yeah. it has a whole list of questions, and we'll just get right started yeah. here. On so real quick code. before we do though, let's read a review. Yes. We had some new ones come in that are great. So thank you. Please keep leaving your reviews. That helps us so much. And we're picking one every week to give a $25 uh, store credit to shop with us at allinonepaint.com. So this week's winner, they didn't leave their real name. They just said a funny person. <laughs> I like you already. A funny person. Yep. And she says, you have a great podcast with lots of ideas. I just ordered my first sample of your paint and I'm anxious to try it. But I very much like that your podcasts are about more than your great paint with decorating and other tips. Your front door color ideas made me think of it in ways I hadn't before. Good. You have a genuinely sweet, caring way about you that I enjoy. She's talking about you at that point, uh -oh. not me. <laughs> now uh. you see it, who knows? She could have been talking about you. Yeah. All right, so uh, that's great. Yeah. So I am glad that you're getting something from the information. Sometimes people are not visual and sometimes they can create their own visuals. Kind of like reading a book. You can create your own scenario in your own head. So I love that and it yeah. uh, makes you more creative sometimes just hearing what someone says than me showing you a picture, maybe you go with your own picture that might even be better than what we're talking about. So I love the podcast for that very reason. So I love um, that I can listen to it on the go too. That's, uh -huh. about, That's the best part about it. Yeah. That's a lot of people who couldn't otherwise get our information or even have a chance to sit down and watch a video. They can hear it. So that's true. Glad you're listening out yes. there. So let's go with your Let's impression. go right into let's it here. So it. 10 things to refresh your dining room. The first one, and I'm not sure how I feel about this one, but you give me your thought on All it. All right. Remove the leaf from your table. Well, I think that would be definitely something I would do, and I think a lot of people do, if you have a large formal dining room and you want to make it more user-friendly so you will actually use the space except for, you know, other than holidays. So you might go in there and sit down and eat uh, with your family. Maybe you put it down to a table that will seat six versus having a table that seats eight or ten, you know, some enormous tables out there. Some have two leaves even. So taking out that leaf, uh, or both leaves uh, and putting it down to a normal casual dining size might mean that you would go in there and sit down and eat uh, more often than you would if you were up and it's so grand and uh, something else question comes up to my mind do you set your dining table and do you put down the dishes and the placemats and all of that lots of people leave their dining room set up like that and i know oh. it's an old school mm -hmm. thing to do but i've been in a lot of houses even here in the, our area a lot of people set their dining room table and they leave it set up like that all the time. So to me, it's a little showroomish. Mm -hmm. So the only time I've ever done that is when I was like showing my house that was for sale or something. So did, right, right. Yeah. It does feel very showroomish. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of people who live like that, and to me, it's very. It's a hard way to live because actually, if you're going to use the table for mm -hmm. a meal, you'd have to take it up, wash it all, because it's going to be covered in dust and fingerprints and so on. So you are going to double work, and it's a great way to show off your dishes and make the table look beautiful. But I think there's a greater way to do that. In other words, I think I would like the less is more attitude there with a beautiful floral, maybe a runner down the table, but not the dirt and dishes and the yeah. service and all of that. Cause and then I, I won't go in and use it. If I've got to work it. before yeah. I can sit to mm -hmm. eat. Yeah. I'm not gonna use it. I'm gonna sit at the bar or I'm gonna sit at my breakfast table. Before <laughs> <laughs> or the couch. What about you all? Mm -hmm. You feel the same way. Yep. So hopefully not offending anyone. I know it's a beautiful way to. It is really it. pretty. It's, it's a very untouchable looking scenario. And me. I love watching videos of people who just do videos of them setting their tables. Oh, I love it too. Videos. And it makes me think, are you gonna leave that? <laughs> You no, because they redo them up? every time uh, you do are, a new video. But are they trying to train my brain to go set my table and leave it like that? Or am I supposed to uh, take it all down and set it back up every time? <laughs> right. <laughs> Ah, I might have got all that energy. What about you guys? You got no. all that energy? I know I do not. I wish that. I did, but right. I don't. <laughs> okay, so the next one. My grandma would turn over in her grave about this one because she had about six of these on her table. Mm -hmm. Take oh. off the table cover. Oh, yes, this could go to so many points and th aspects of our own life. Take off the table cover 100%. People paid big dollars, I'm sure your grandmother did, mm -hmm. for a table pad. I know of being yeah. in the furniture business, there was a company, the Table Pad Company, and if you had a specific cut on the edge of your table and so on, this table pad would mimic that, and they were thousands of dollars mm -hmm. for this pad. Yep. So, um, I have to say this. If you have a beautiful table, throw that table pad out 
and use that doggone thing because uh, life is short. At the longest, life is short. So it almost mm. makes me think of, um, you know, a purse. I, I remember my mother having all these handbags, and I would say, Mother, why don't you carry that handbag? No, that's a special occasion bag. What in the heck? I almost said a bad word. Why are you waiting <laughs> on that? Why don't you carry that purse? Because, listen. Being is alive a, is a special occasion. I agree. So use the dining table. Throw out yep. that pad. Look at mm -hmm. that beautiful finish. And if some kid sits down there and mars it with a fork, get out some stain and fix it. You know, mm -hmm. just don't live the life thinking what ifs. Just go ahead and enjoy it as is. And uh, I know that's against the grain to a lot of people, but uh, you may have your table all set up with the pad on there. <laughs> You may be really hating on this podcast. Well, they're going to unsubscribe. Go, unsubscribe. Go unsubscribe us right there. We went right out the old window right there. So, uh, all right. Sorry again to offend. Of course, these are just our opinions, right? And that's right. Um, you don't have to listen. No. <laughs> or agree, and you don't have to agree with no. everything, all of our tips. Nope. That's, right. that's okay if you don't. Um, <laughs> there's probably a lot of you out there that don't, but that's Maybe okay. Maybe not more now than there were. <laughs> Uh, oh, this is a good one. Update the linens on your table. Oh, always a plus. Always mm -hmm. a plus. And I think that's something you can do seasonally. There again, if you're just going to use a runner or something beautiful down the center of the table, you can use textures and so on, or it doesn't always have to be a floral fabric or whatever, but you can choose to do that in the summer. Just lots of great things and ways to update that space. A dining room, it takes up a large portion of your home. So it is a great thing to have some linens and have some that are out and present. Some softness to balance out that big, hard That's chunk right. of wood. You got wood the floors table. and you got a wood table and all that area rug. That's going to be my biggest tip for you. Get down a beautiful area rug and let that be your uh -oh. softening and draperies. Also. 11. I had drapery. Oh, you had drapery. Oops, I skipped ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, we'll go ahead and do that. All right. All right. We'll just skip right down to draperies then. Uh -huh. uh, remove the heavy ones. I agree. Remove heavy ones. If you're living in your house, uh, your home for many, many years, you've had custom draperies made for your dining room. Um, it's a good time to assess them, look at them, see if they're shot from the sun and so on, because at the best you can do, the sun's going to eat them up through the years. You can also think of them in a couple ways. Sometimes you have a cornice board or you have something heavy and maybe you have a simple drape itself. Maybe the drapery is a solid color. Maybe it's got some sort of a brocade or a trim or whatever on it you can remove that just take a seam ripper take off that heavy trim simplify what's there maybe take down the heavy top treatment of some sort maybe you have something on a pole take that off and just use the beautiful drapery panels themselves and unheavy them and mm -hmm. uh, that's going to update your room tremendously I, i'm a big fan of draperies and i think certain spaces command that you have draperies bedrooms where you need to have privacy and light Softening, you need those things. And a dining room is certain in places. Mm -hmm. Softening can uh, add so much character to the room. Uh, and if you've just got hard windowscapes with nothing on them, you're always going to be fighting dirty windows and just, um, you know, the whole thing. So draperies are a beautiful way to soften that up. I'm trying and, to come around with you about the draperies. <laughs> also I, just see, I, just, I just see a big dust collector when I see them. Well, the window itself they is are collecting pretty, dust on That's its own. True. So there's That's nothing going to stop the dust. That's right. Can't get rid of it. Mm -mm. Okay, how about updating the chairs? So, um, one of the suggestions we had was to change out the captain's chairs. That's a great to one. To maybe break up a match set. That's a great one. Match sets have been long gone for a long time. So, it's kind of the same rules. You know, things look, need to look evolved. They don't need to look like you went out to uh, Haverty's and bought a new dining table with six chairs and two captain's chairs, and they're all the same finish. So, a great way to and do that. And matching kind of hutch. And... Yeah, right. Matchy match. So, the matchy match thing's kind of over. And it's a great place. Uh, the dining room's a great place for paint to play into the scenario. Because you can always paint things. Paint the table. Paint the legs. Paint the top. You don't necessarily have to paint everything in the room. You can paint the back panel of your china cabinet. Uh, you can even take the china hutch off. Just use a server. Or maybe you already have both. But you can paint a piece and give it that kind of evolved or eclectic look. Uh, but... The table chairs is a great way to make those chairs look different is to take those two captain, captain's chairs off, the armchairs, replace them with fabric covered upholstered chairs, Parsons chairs, uh, you know, fully upholstered Parsons oh, chair. Yeah, that's a good great idea. way to soften up an old school looking dining table. And it's a really quick refresh, putting, putting them together with a neutral and keeping your uh, side chairs, but just put those two Parsons chairs there, pick up maybe a beautiful plaid or a floral, Add some fun to your room. 
uh, depending on what else you got going on in there. But that's a great way to revamp that dining table and uh, add, add some new life to it. And the fact that this is also in style now to mix and match pieces just opens mm -hmm. us up to be super budget friendly because we can go to sure. places like the thrift store and Facebook Marketplace and Goodwill, mm -hmm. find pieces, use paint, yeah, make them no doubt. coordinate. Another little tip for you too, Parsons chairs are a dime a dozen on Marketplace. You can buy them so inexpensive. Everybody buys them, they hate them, they think they get rid of them. So buy them, you're just buying the frame and then buy a Parson cover, chair covers. And you can buy those in a ton of different patterns. Amazon has them have uh, fully upholstered ones that'll go all the way to the ground. You can get them in linens and you can really create different looks, but just buying the Parsons chair itself from someone, you can find a great cover. Just be kind of uh, paying attention to how the back is made. Make sure you don't get something that's hard to find a cover to fit for, but that's a great way to do it. Very inexpensive. You had the sweetest ones at your old house with the bow on the back or like a, they laced up or something. Oh, yes. Above. That was Those so pretty. Ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They really were. Um, you can also recover the fabric on your chair. So if that's, sure. again, kind of like the draperies, if you've got a really heavy brocade mm -hmm. type deal, they're really not hard to The to chair recover. bottom cover is mm -hmm. nothing but a staple gun operation. And I would say go spend the extra 30, go spend $10 extra and get an electric staple gun because that <laughs> makes it so much easier, especially if you got old, old achy hands like I do, if you're going to grip that staple gun that many times go get the electric one it's so easy it just fires um just one simple little push of the trigger and you can recover those just in a matter of minutes um, always think about three square feet of fabric for your your cushions and uh, that should kind of cover for you so we actually did mine with a paint drop cloth in their mm -hmm, door they're great yeah. and i still have material left over so that if somebody does get a stain on it i'm not sweating it because no. i'll just pop that off and put another piece on drop cloth yeah <laughs> uh let's see oh your favorite the light fixture oh definitely light fixture uh great way to update a light fixture if you have like old brass of course brass is back but you may be tired of brass <laughs> is you can paint it all in one paint allows you to paint lights light fixtures and uh, update them and make them totally change to maybe old rub bronze or whatever it is if you like the shape of that you have up there a uh, great way to do that but another soft way to add a little bit of difference to i think any light fixture that has the candelabra bulbs Little shades, <laughs> little shades. And you can get straight sided shades. They don't have to be the old ones that have the uh, bell shape. You can get a straight side one, which looks a little more contemporary. You can get them in all sorts of fabrics. You can get them with full lining on the interior. So it gives an ambered light to the table, adds a lot of drama and much prettier to look at too. Another great tip for your chandelier or any light fixture is to add a dimmer on the switch. So easy to do, controls the light and changes the whole mood of your room just in a quick flash. You can make that now a soft little candlelight glow versus a big blaring lights out kind of deal where it's blinding you like the one right in front of me. It's blinding me. <laughs> she hates to talk about lighting in case you can't uh, hear the excitement in her voice. Oh, her... lighting is my thing. Yes. I totally believe lighting is the key. To what everything. type of light do you recommend in the dining room? Warm? Right. Oh, well, you're kind of limited to your light fixture because the light fixtures are going to... I never would put a day light bulb in the light in a dining fixture ever because the first thing you want to do is think of this whenever you have a, a meal in your dining room normally you're thinking of an elegant situation it's christmas it's thanksgiving or it's dinner you may be having a special dinner you want to have a glow like a candlelit glow so you want to put a warm bulb in there so I'll never buy those bulbs today they make a candle shaped bulb that's the led those right. are the hideous, most hideous bulbs I have ever seen in my entire life. There went the rest of the people that... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry there. I went everybody else. Get a dimmable light bulb, and it will tell you on there if it can be dimmed. You can get LED bulbs, but you get a warm temperature bulb. Don't get an uh, office light for your dining room where you turn that on, and you can, you know, you're trying to make people look good in a pretty warm glow. So that's the best way to think of it. Okay. Uh, oh. Add a pretty centerpiece to the table. Do you mm -hmm. have any tips for us on centerpieces? Uh, I do. I have a centerpiece tip. I certainly do. Uh, when the table's in use, you want to think of a centerpiece as something that people can have a conversation across because you don't want to put a big barrier that that's three feet high across uh, so you can't see or talk to people on the other side unless you intend to have your in-laws over there and you don't <laughs> want to see them. <laughs> Uh, but no, you want to be sure and make your centerpiece low enough, make it tall enough that it's pretty, but keep it under about a foot and, you know, 18 inches would be extremely tall. So keep it under about 12 inches and that way you'll be able to see across the table. 
and have a conversation across, including candles. Don't get the candles too tall either because they're gonna also be obstructing your view. So keep everything down low. Now that's when the table's in service, but when their table's not in service, maybe you can take that one off, set it onto the buffet, and then use something tall or more grand during non-meal times. So that's kind of my thinking. Flowers. Definitely live flowers if you can. If you can do live flowers, easy just to throw some in a basket right now or put them in a glass bowl. Put That's some, true. yeah, very easy. Put marbles in the bottom of a glass bowl. Let the greenery of the uh, live flower be your centerpiece and you don't have to know a thing about them. Just lay them in there and put some water in them and voila, it's going to look great. For at least some period of time. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to grow them <laughs> right now. I'm getting ready to make mine out in my air Are you blooming already? Oh, they're beautiful. They're mine aren't big. blooming yet. Oh, really? Mm -mm. They are coming up crazy. They're about. They're already about eight inches big. Big green balls out there at the moment. But I'm going to cut some. And I got a lime green vase. I'm going to put in there with my picture I mm -hmm. painted today. I'm going to make a pretty little arrangement. Well, funny enough, you mentioned the picture you painted because my last tip is to change out the art. Mm -hmm. Definitely change out the art. If you have old posters framed, throw them out. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, go get some real art, pho photographs or anything. But if you frame posters, little thin frames, you really bring your space down. And I know a lot of people might disagree with that too. But um, I think art is uh, very personal. So it's hard for anybody to judge your art. But if you have inexpensive things, just uh, collages and things like that. Make sure you have good heavy frames that look substantial. If you've got little small frames, it's gonna make your art feel small. It's gonna bring your room down, so. And another thing, if you have faded art, meaning if you have a, um, some of the um, um, matte has been faded by the sun, which it does so easily, and a lot of prints will fade too. They change colors, they look sad. And they'll kind of start turning pink and blue. You know the, what I'm uh -huh. talking about when the yeah. when the UV light starts getting to them. Time to take those down. Something else you can do is paint the frames. If your frames are looking, uh, maybe you've got old oak frames and faded artwork. Take that same piece of art and maybe um, paint the frame and give it some depth again because they begin to get pastel after they've been on the wall so long. <laughs> uh, you can also save that frame, take that old art out, put something new in there, and. Just go from the back, take the, loose the staples, put something new inside. Is there a rule of thumb for the size of your artwork compared to the wall? Uh, there is in my world. I don't know that there is a rule of thumb particularly, but scale is everything. You know, if you have grand, big dining room table and you've got little two foot, uh, two foot art hanging on the wall, it's gonna be out of scale. So I always look at it like, I wanna draw the eye up in the room. If you have eight foot ceilings and you've got a chandelier in the room, mirrors great way a great grand gesture in a dining room is to reflect the beautiful light so if you can hang a mirror above your buffet and then maybe across the room maybe between two windows put a beautiful piece of art maybe hung vertically versus normal horizontal but hang it vertical so it's going to draw the eye up and make the room feel taller which is what you're trying to do draw the eye up and keep make everything feel taller and more expansive in the room on a vertical level so that would be a um, quick suggestion if you can do that. Easy. It's so easy. And of course you can always make your own art too. <laughs> you can make your own art. Get a little bit of leftover all in one paint. Just That's what we did here. That's slap what it to it. You can't see it if you're yeah. on the podcast, yeah. but you can see it on YouTube if yeah. you want to go watch. So, um, yeah, that's it. So, those were some that's, great tips. All right. Good I think the dining room is my favorite room in my home. Is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you have a beautiful mm -hmm. dining room. Yep. She has a really pretty dining room. She's, She's painted up everything I've in there. I've worked hard on it <laughs> off uh, old Facebook Marketplace there. But mm -hmm. I you think did just it all because, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. yep. 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 It's just the family aspect of it. I mean, that's where we have the family gatherings at our house. So, we have a good size table and all that. But it's just. Plus, you have a casual table, so you can go in there and sit and right. anytime. Yep. So, I like doing. I like putting effort into that room because it's Pay where my off. family is, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, and it, it reminds me of that. It, even when I mm -hmm. see it and they're not there, it sparks that. Mm -hmm. I, so. You know, in this house, I have a, uh, it's not really a formal, formal room. It's kind of a semi-formal. You have just a big open concept. I do. I have everything. a huge bar, but then I have a dining table that's sitting there and I put benches around this table. I put well, how many benches do I have? I have eight chairs, six chairs and a bench. So I'll seat eight people. But it's kind of a casual table, and uh, my friend Roger Greer built the table here in Louisville, and he does such a beautiful job, and we painted it with all-in-one paint, and he put the big farmhouse legs on it, and then, of course, the benches we added, but um, it just made a great little casual dining space there. No leaf. It's all set up. It's a square table, 
so it's kind of hard to find square, but it has a pretty distinct It is, and the square color. makes it look modern, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a different kind of a look. I have a rug underneath it, and um, just softened it up, but it is always in view. It's not like a room you can close off. It's just kind of sitting right in dead center everybody sees the dining table. So you can't use yours as a catch-all for laundry and whatever no. else like no. some of us can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it's right there. You cannot use it as any kind of a craft space. <laughs> That's the good thing about an open concept house now, though. At least you can't junk it up because it's That's the, true. You cannot. You can't hide the you junk. You can. You can. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> if you have company, you're going to have to do the quick shuffle. You're going to have to do the cleaning shuffle and then get it all picked up before they come. That's about the only time I clean. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it's great to have guests come over. It is. Because you clean. Yeah. You, know, you go to work a little bit. Mm -hmm. I like knowing company's coming, then I'll get all my little projects tied up. Yeah. So. That's like they the care. Way. They don't care. <laughs> they don't even know. It's just your own agenda. You know, you set up that and you go, you know, I got to get all that done before they come. Like they're going to see <laughs> that I didn't finish that. Little do they know. <laughs> um, all, right. all right, guys. Thank you all so much for listening to us here uh, at Hey Paula, help me with my DIY project. If you have additional questions or you want to give us some tips and ideas, maybe some things we need to talk about, we would love to hear from you. Also, please leave us a review if you enjoy the podcast. We'd like to hear from you. Maybe you will win on our next episode. We'll be reading it aloud. Leave your name so we can call you out here. <laughs> and uh, it's always hard to say no names said this, but hey, uh, leave us a review and maybe you'll be the winner of the $25 gift certificate and you can shop with us at allinonepaint.com. Thank you all. Check out our free sample offer if you're here listening and uh, get your free sample of All In One Paint. You'll know what all the people are talking about and how much people love the product. We hope you give it a try. We'll see you all later. Thank you for watching, listening. Bye.